Hi, and welcome to Pisple GUI 2020, part four, window updates. Let's rewind briefly. We were talking about the event loop in the last uh, mega lesson. If you uh, were watching lesson three or part three, uh, go take a bathroom break because you sat for an hour and uh, somehow made it through that. Uh, so we're talking about persistent windows here. And um, there are a few things that uh, need to be talked about with persistent windows that I don't think I touched on last time and one of them is that you need to make sure that you call read on a frequent basis or call refresh on a frequent basis if not then your window will become unresponsive and you will get the dreaded error message uh, that the error message is one that we've all seen uh, with windows um, I'm going to simulate that for you here in in just a moment uh, one thing that we need to talk talk about is event handling and what that looks like. Um, so in let's run this window or the program and show you what the window looks like. Uh, here's our layout. We have input, we have some tech, we have some button. And what you need to do to process events is to do some if statements. So if the event and is okay, and remember that these will be keys um, that are returned from read. That's what events are, are their keys. In the case of buttons, the default for the key is the name, the text that's on the button. You don't have to specify a key for it. So in this case, if the event is okay, that means they press the okay button and we're going to do just a while true um, and, uh, and do nothing else and that will simulate for us what happens when uh, you go off and you don't call read or anything else and you see that it is frozen and windows um, will will come popping up with a message that says your, your window has become unresponsive it may not be happening because i'm running pycharm um, there we go python is not responding right and the reason is that we did not call read or read refresh. Now what I could do in here is call window.refresh and um, that will at least keep windows uh, happy. So you see the, the window has not crashed. It's not going to do anything. Uh, I can press buttons and, and the cancel button won't do anything. In fact, closing the window with the X looks like it did something, but it didn't in reality. You can see that the button still up here is to stop. And this is why it's important that you check for none events after reads is because your window will, con or your program program will continue to execute even though that window is gone and you don't know it except that your system becomes slow and you don't know why. So be sure and call read or refresh or you will get the unresponsive window message. So so what do you do in the case of long uh, duration tasks, things that you need to do? So if, if uh, we need to go do something with IO or hardware that was going to take several seconds, well, what you do is you spin off a thread and you do the work in the thread and you let your GUI continue working uh, and running. Um, what you can't do is just go off and uh, do a bunch of CPU intensive stuff without at least calling refresh or, or else you'll get that nice message from Windows that your window is unresponsive. Okay, so updating the window. The way that you output to uh, an, uh, an element to a window or make a change to it is called its update method and each type of element has a different update method generally speaking the first parameter to update is the value so in the checkbox it would be the true false value for a text element which is what we're going to work with here it's the uh, the value of the, the text you know that's the text so let's uh, change this program so that when you hit ok it will take whatever you have input and it will display it in the window. So let's run this just so you can see what we're talking about here. Uh, here is our layout in our window. You see uh, you entered there is next to it a text element that is 20 characters long and there's nothing shown here and it has a key out. So the task for us is to when someone hits OK we want to output to this text element whatever they input. So 
the first thing we want to do is we want to look up the, uh, the element and find it in our layout and the way or in our window. And the way we do that is what looks like a dictionary lookup. Uh, and that is window bracket, the name of the key. Then we call it update method and we pass into it um, a, a variety of parameters. The first parameter for a text element is uh, the value that we want to, to change it to. In this case, we want to change it to the input value. Now, our input values are in this values dictionary. The key for this input field right here is called in. So values sub in is the value of that input field. So what we're doing is we're looking up the element for the, for the text, then we're calling its update function and we're passing in the whatever the, the value that the user entered. So let's run this program. We're going to type test, click OK, and you see that it is output there. Clear it, same sort of thing. And this program will run until you hit cancel and hit cancel, it closes the, the window. So how do you uh, find out what are valid parameters? Well, you look in the manual or you look at the doc string. And there are a couple of ways of going about that. Um, one thing we can do is say our text element is windows. Uh, quote. We put our key, right? So we've already said that this uh, looks up the element. Um, and if we tell PyCharm what type is, that this is a text element, then we can use text alum down here dot update. And the update in this case will be one that matches the text element. So I did a control Q, we talked about that before. And you see that there are, we can change the value, we can change the background color, the text color, the font, and we can make it visible or invisible. So let's uh, not only change the, uh, the value, let's also change the text color to be yellow and run it again. And so now whenever I enter in, it changes not only the value, but it's changing the text color as well. So if you don't have the doc string handy, then of course you know already to go to pysimplegui.org and pull up the documentation. And uh, at the end of the documentation, you're gonna find the elements listed. Here's our text element. We scroll down, there's an update method, and there are the different uh, parameters that are available for that. If you look at the radio element, you can go down and see there's two updates. One has an uppercase, one has a lowercase. They are the same. The lower case is the PEP8 compliant version. Um, so you see the update for radio button is different. They're each different from each other. Um, it just depends on the element. So that's two different ways for you to find out um, what the valid parameters are. One is doc string, the other is the, um, the documentation. I, I would like to ask a favor of users here. Um, please don't guess at a parameter and uh, run it and, and then crash and then copy and paste this and file it as an issue. Just don't do that. Look at the documentation. Don't guess, guess incorrectly and then file it as a bug. It, it, it's just not a bug. It, it's just you didn't look at the documentation. So thank you for your cooperation in that regard. Uh, let's take a look at the, actually there's a slide or there is a, a page in the accompanying text. Um, there are uh, a few points here to be made about updates. One is if you try to do an update on an element prior to calling read, it will not work. You need to display the window first. And by display, we talked about that earlier, you either read or you finalize it. So let's say that you wanted to change this uh, text before you call read. The way you finalize is that there's a parameter. There's also uh, a call that you can make. You could add, you'll see some old programs that add finalize as uh, a chained call like that. That's not the, the way you'll find it in any of the code now. Um, use the finalize parameter instead. And at that point, you'll be able to make modifications. Um, you could say, let's put this up here and we're going to say one, two, three, four, five. Now, whenever um, we run it, we will see uh, this output here prior to calling read. If I 
did not have finalize on here, you will get an error and you will get uh, a warning on the console here that says you need to do a finalize. So rather than crash, I tried to be kind and tell you that the key, you know, the element with the key out cannot be updated until you either finalize or read the window. So you do at least have some hints as to what's going on. Uh, another thing here is, um, again, looking at old code, you will find uh, instead of this bracket or, or dictionary style lookup, you'll see window.findElement uh, out like that uh, in, with an update call. And that, that works too. Um, if it's really old code, actually it won't work with how to finalize. If it's really old code, then you'll find um, the non-pep8 version, which has an uppercase find element. I think that this is what you're most likely going to run into with old code as something that looks like that. Um, and you can see that it, it went ahead and did the update on it with, without using the, the bracket style, uses the find element call instead. Um, Okay, I think that's uh, all that there is for this lesson. Hopefully uh, you now know how to uh, create a window, how to interact with a window, process events, um, and output to a window. And, and don't forget to close your windows when you're done with them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy using Python GUI.